Okay, I'm going to give you a demonstration of the HP work log, which is a solution to track projects, um, in this case, construction projects in particular. Um, this is our HP homepage, uh, our intranet. If we click on Sandbox here, that will bring us to our Sandbox page where we have all of our different sandboxes for examples. Um, come down to HP Construction Log Prototype. And we have a couple different lists built here. Um, we have a new project setup form, which could be used by a sales team that's uh, trying to notify the operations team that there's a new project. Uh, the work log, which is actually where the project lives and is monitored. And then we have uh, some work log dashboards that are associated with the data that's in the work log. So I'll show you each one of these pieces individually. Let's go to the new project setup form first. So as you can see, this is just a list of uh, projects that have been assigned by a sales team. Um, if we go up here and press new, we can create a new test project. I'll just Call it Brendan Test, just like the last one, maybe Brendan Test 2. Um, project number, whatever your numbering scheme is. You can just give it an eight digit uh, address. I'm just going to give it the hinge point address here. So we're using at least a real address. And then owner entity, that's just a company. This is also a company. Customer PO reference is usually some kind of number. Um, customer contact. You can throw in a, an email. Contacts address, if that's available. Uh, billing date, this is just one specific way to do it, but 25th of the month, end of the month, no requirements for project billing. We'll just go with 25th of the month. Uh, booking date, that's the day that we're booking it, so we'll put 329 2018. Start date of the project, we'll just say that it's going to start on the 1st of uh, April. Uh, project completion date, we'll just say 9-1-2018. Um, we'll make this an interiors project. Job type, we'll do a remodel since it's only a five-month project here. Uh, billing type, invoice statement. Architect, if we have the architect's name, I'll be the architect as well. Job size is uh, the value of the job. Um, we just call it a million dollar project. Uh, contract amount pre-tax. These are all just numbers that sales uh, would use to um, basically track the project as it comes in. Um, We'll just give this a similar number. And estimated profit, we'll just say 500,000. Does it need full-time supervision, yes or no? We'll say yes. Uh, is the building occupied? We'll say yes. <clears throat> we could choose project difficulty, and this, this feeds a different aspect uh, that we've created for one of our clients for a resource allocation um, list. Uh, we'll just give it a two. Immediate start, yes. Uh, client interaction, this is another thing that feeds the resource pool um, <clears throat> or the resource review. You can just give this a two as well. Um, and estimator, this specific field is actually um, related directly to our, um, our Azure AD, so Anybody on our team that I type in here, their names will actually um, appear. If we had any attachments, we could attach them here, but we'll click Save, and this will trigger workflows um, that should send a notification out. 
so if we check my email here, looks like I just got a new project notification. Request for your input. This is basically uh, an approval email. It's coming from Bryce Finnerty, my boss, because uh, he's the one who owns the workflow. Um, so a new project has been booked, resource assignment required. Uh, it's called test two. This is a link to the actual information in the new project setup form. And all I have to do is click confirm to respond. And I get a message that lets me know that it was uh, responded to. And I have this workflow set up to basically notify me for everything just so I can demo it. But these notifications that I'm getting would be going back and forth between team members. Um, so I just got another one. Your new project request has been received. You'll be scheduling a sales handoff uh, to take place in the next two days. This is the message that an estimator or a salesperson would get back from, um, from the uh, senior leader on the project team that um, just confirmed that they received that email and uh, that new project. Um, This email is just another uh, layout that I created in the workflow to send the same new project notification email. Uh, but it's just a different format. So this one actually says like the project name. Um, and I forget how I named these, but it's uh, that's the project number and that's the client. And then this is a link to uh, the new project setup as well. So if we go back to the uh, work log, so this is the new project setup form still. We'll go back to, um, you can see that, first of all, this is actually um, saved in here as a record, but this can be treated as an archive, and we can actually set up flows to delete this item after it's pushed out to the work log, but everything that's pushed across the work log will basically just sit here. Um, if we go back to the sandbox, there's no easy way to really navigate back to it without uh, going to our sandbox just because it's built in our internet environment. But um, we can go to the work log now and see that the new item that I created in the new project setup form is now sitting here and we push specific fields, um, the client, project name, project number, location, Project type, job size, client contact, division uh, phase is automatically going to start an initiation, schedule start date, booking date's a timestamp, that's uh, when this item was actually created in, um, in the work log, schedule completion date, and these other fields that are open are actually um, manual inputs, but um, percent complete could actually be a roll-up of a project plan, so you have accurate time, as could estimated hours and actual hours. Um, so the next part of this workflow has to do with assigning the senior leader, project manager, and superintendent. So if we want to assign these people, we can just click select the line item or the project that we want to edit, click edit. And go down to senior leader here. I'm just going to add myself as all of these, even though they are also collect or, uh, connected to our Azure AD, um, just so I get all the notifications so I can show you what those look like. So I'm going to be project manager, superintendent, and senior leader, and this will trigger some different workflows. So if I click Save, that will trigger another workflow. So it triggers another workflow um, that basically shoots me another email because I am the now assigned as the project manager. So this is how a, a senior leader would notify their team that they've been assigned a new project. Um, we do have a certain workflow set up also that um, is a new project or project change notification is what it says. I have it set up to where if you are um, the individual 
who owns that project as the project manager and you're making edits to um, your items on the work log, it won't notify you, but I've changed that up just for this specific demo so that I could receive the demos or the um, emails by myself without, uh, without having to have another team member with me here. So um, you can see that this email uh, is really similar to the one that the estimator would receive or uh, the senior leader. It says that you've been assigned a new project um, or someone other than yourself has made edits to an existing project that you're managing has the name of the client and the project and the project number. And then this links out to the, um, to the actual item in the work log so that you can see all the details uh, related to the project and manage it from here as well. So that's pretty much the entire workflow between the uh, work log and the, or the new project setup log and the work log. Um, and in the next video, I'll show you uh, how the dashboards are related to that um, as they refresh um, in the background right now.